What does our new Minister for Brexit, David Davis, think our relationship with the EU should look like? Well, we know from an article he wrote earlier this year, months before he got the job, that he likes the look of Canada. He wrote, the EU's tra trade deal with Canada would be a perfectly good starting point for our discussions. Well, Canada's Trade Minister, Christia Freeland, is in London at the moment and is here now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sarah. Um, on this question of the trade deal, though, Canada, what you have taken seven years to negotiate, you've yet to sign, but it, it is there. Uh, it's being held up as a model for something that the UK could follow. Do you think such a deal would be good for the UK? Um, well, look, we are really proud of our trade agreement. It's called CETA. Uh, we consider this to be, and, and many people do, a gold standard agreement. It's probably the most ambitious trade agreement the EU has ever negotiated. And from our standpoint, it's an even deeper relationship than our NAFTA agreement with the U.S. and Mexico. So this is a great deal. Um, we are working very hard, as you mentioned, Sarah, to get CETA signed. We hope that will happen in the fall implemented. We're working to get that done early next year. So the e the UK will be part of CETA, and that's great. Okay, but my particular question was really, CETA may be great for Canada, but would a similar deal, do you think, be great for the UK in its relations with the EU? You know what? The UK has a brand new cabinet. I've been listening to your discussion of it, and that's going to be for them to judge. But we're very happy to share with them, and we have been sharing at a technical level, you know, some real details of exactly how CETA works. Oh, what well, they have, all, we they have already got in contact with you and said, look, hold on, how does this work? Can we copy it? Well, we've been having technical exchanges for sure, and I look forward to uh, seeing Dr. Fox this afternoon. Okay. Now, for those of us who don't understand the technicalities of it, can you explain? <laughs> it is complicated. Well, trade is complicated, Sarah, really complicated. It, we have 300 trade negotiators in Canada. And we don't have so many. And I guess that's one of the first problems. It certainly takes a big, very expert team to negotiate trade agreements. In the 21st century, they are really, really complex. CETA is almost 2,000 pages. Can I ask you that? What I was had been going to ask you is for those of us outside, and you know the deal we currently have with the EU. We're just we're just part of the European Union. It's a, you know forty years effectively of, of legislation in place. If we copied you, what do you think would be the advantages and disadvantages from where we stand at the moment? Look, CETA is a great deal as trade deals go, but it's not membership of the EU. Uh, it's a significantly less close relationship. Uh, there are what does that mean in practice, though? Sir, uh, there are ambitious uh, services agreements inside CETA, uh, but the level of access that the UK has with passporting is not replicated in CETA. And, and, and I should there explain, those are passporting is the rights that banks, that the City of London has to trade. Uh, you think we would lose that? Well, certainly, let me put it this way. Um, the access on financial services in CETA uh, is not as close as what EU members have amongst themselves. And another area where CETA is not as ambitious is on labor mobility. There is some good mobility for professionals, but not nearly as much as you have inside the EU. Uh, of course, many people in the UK would listen to that and think that's exactly what we want. We don't want so much mobility. Um, in, in negotiations, um, the Canadian position is actually to always be very ambitious on labour mobility. We think that that facilitates trade, but that's, that's the Canadian mm. view. And the Canadian view, obviously, I mean, there are Canadian banks who have, their, who have headquarters, who have serious offices here in London. If the UK does not keep its passporting rights to the EU, would they move? Um, you know what? I have responsibility for a lot of things, but I'm not in charge of Canada's banks, so I'll leave it to them to answer that question. But can you can you ex you understand the arguments? Is it? A, I, I do understand the arguments. And I'm yes. just wondering that, that because a lot of people say, "Look, fine, we take a hit, but it's a price that we're ha we'd be happy to pay, and ultimately, two years down the line, we'd be in a better position." A again, you know, um, that's. 
going to be a judgment for the British people and the British government to make. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, what we do know from David Davis, he wrote two weeks ago uh, in, in, when he was talking about what our relationships could look like, was that, that we start striking some bilateral tr trade deals. And he points out that the first should be struck with the US, China and Canada. We have a huge amount of trade between our two countries. How quickly do you think we could have a new bilateral deal in place to replace the current arrangement with the EU? Um, well, what's lucky when it comes to Canada-UK relations, which you're absolutely right, are really, really strong. Um, <clears throat> we export about 11 billion pounds worth to the UK every year. We import about 8 billion. And on investment, Canadian investors invest 45.5 billion pounds into the UK every year. So we have a very robust relationship because, you know, we're not just friends, we're family. The good news is um, on the timelines that CETA is on right now, the UK will be a party to that because it's a member of the EU. So we are already on a track to have the UK and Canada have an even closer foundation for our trading relationship. And that will be quite soon. And so that what will be you've got, early next year. So the argument is what you've got a ready oven deal that you can just swap for as a bilateral run rather than one with the EU. Well, at this stage, it wouldn't even be swapping. It's something that the UK would be a party to as a member of the EU yeah, but we at won't the moment be, that we won't CETA be a is member implemented. Of the EU. Well, you are very likely to be according to what I am hearing and what I believe are the technical circumstances, you're very likely to still be early next year when CETA will be implemented. Right. And so you would be party to that. And so then, you know, then the issue will be for the UK and the EU to figure out their own new trading relationship. And a part of that figuring out will be figuring out how CETA will work between Christia. all three parties. Christian Freeland, thank you very much. My pleasure, Sarah.